Uh, welcome to this new live stream from the London School of English. Today you will discover how to do really well in your English speaking interviews. We will teach you some practical skills in answering questions in English. And if you're looking for a job uh, in an English uh, speaking uh, country or uh, uh, an English speaking company, uh, and uh, English is your second language, quite often you would come across two problems. So first, the type of questions in the English speaking world actually be different from the ones that are popular in your country of origin. What do they actually mean? What's the best way to answer them? By the end of the live stream, we hope you will be very well equipped for answering these questions. Another common problem is how to speak English confidently during your interview. To help you with this, we prepared some very useful expressions and phrases in English that you can use during your job interviews. We have a great deal of practical and useful advice, so stay with us to learn how to succeed in your English speaking interviews. My name is Olga and I'm part of the London School of English uh, team. Today we have with us an expert English language trainer, Linda Stott, who has a great deal of experience of teaching business and professional English at the London School of English, and Faisa Afsal from our clients' services team. Uh, Today is also very special because Linda and Pfizer will be helping you to navigate interview questions and answers together from the language point of view and from the point of view of an experienced international interviewer such as Pfizer who conducted tons and tons of interviews in various English speaking countries. So just to remind you that this live stream is very interactive. So write your questions and comments in the live chat next to the video and we will attempt to answer as many of them as we possibly can particularly during our question and answer sessions at the end. Uh, and actually, perhaps just start telling us where you're joining us from and whether you already uh, have had any interviews in English. I can see that uh, we've got uh, a lot of people joining us. Uh, hello, Jufran. Hello, Ali, Max Ahmed, uh, Mathieu, Daniela, Tanya. Welcome to, the, to this live stream. So, uh, and uh, I'm sure the uh, Constanza, uh, so uh, if I haven't uh, if I haven't named all of you, uh, hello, warm, warm welcome. And uh, now I'm delighted to introduce you to Linda and Pfizer. So uh, Linda and Pfizer, now uh, the word is to you. And how uh, so? How can our viewers really succeed in English speaking interview? So uh, that's uh, that's your turn to talk about this. So I'd just like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Linda, um, Linda Stutt. I'm an English language trainer. I've been an English language trainer for 11 years. I've taught both in South Africa, uh, Italy, uh, and of course in London. Over to you, Faiza. Uh, thanks, Linda. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Faiza. Um, I work here on the client services team. Um, Great to see some familiar faces. So you might recognize us if you've attended uh, our live streams before. And uh, if you haven't, thank you so much uh, for joining us for the first time. Um, in terms of how we're planning to structure today, uh, we're gonna go through some popular questions that if you're doing an interview for a job, you're likely going to be asked. And how we're planning to answer uh, is, I can give you a quick overview of the types of things you should be saying when you're asked a question. And then Linda will give you some very helpful phrases and tips that you can use um, and that you can apply. We'll be going through um, quite a bit of content, but don't worry because uh, we will put together a blog later on so then you can see all of the, the expressions and everything that we'll be going through. So you can reference that later uh, and we'll put a link in the description for this live stream. Okay, so I'm not <laughs> going to introduce uh, myself because the first question we're going to cover is if you get asked in an interview, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so I will give you my answer at the end so you can see how I apply it. Um, but when you're doing a job interview, this is your opportunity to explain about your experiences um, and about various things. So we're going to look at four areas. Uh, first is your education, so any qualifications. So Linda, how, how can we look at that? Yeah, so I think that that's, um, the, I just want to say hi to everybody. There are quite a lot of nice comments about greeting us and um, yeah. uh, cons 
Costanza, yes, I remember you from, from last year, yes. Um, but I want to move straight in. Hello, everybody. <laughs> but the most important part, I think, uh, for a job interview is to consider the culture of the country uh, that you're interviewing in as the questions you are asked and the manner in which you answer them could differ from your own uh, from your own. And I think this is quite important. Cultural preferences and cultural expectations would be quite key to find out about before you go for an interview. It can be quite shocking to have to sell yourself in an interview when you come from a culture where this is seen as impolite. There are many uh, examples of different cultural uh, issues uh, on our blog, um, and there's some very nice articles and uh, illustrations of this. So, getting back to your point about how do you I, how do you go about this? So, what language could you use to talk about your education and your qualifications? So, here are a few examples. You could say, "I graduated from," and then put in your university in, and then the year. Or you could say, "I studied." at and then put the university or the college i got a diploma in whatever it is and then i went on to study whatever the course is now very often people get confused between qualifications um, and uh, qualities and what i want to say is qualifications can be a course that you did or where you received a diploma or a certificate or an award. And this also includes anything that you specialized in. So that's quite important to bring that in. So you could say, for instance, I did, because it's in the past, I did a management course in, 2000 and, in 2018, and this helped me too. So very often interviewers, and I think you'll agree with this, Pfizer, interviewers like to know, why you did the course or how it helped you or what was the benefit of that specifically related to the job i'm a qualified teacher um might be useful to also give you ielts score if you've done an ielts and if the job requires it so i have an ielts certificate with a score of some countries um, like you to have an fce certificate so i have an fce certificate with the score of. I think this would be, um, this would cover that. Over to you, Pfizer. Mm -hmm. So this is all overall the question of, please tell me a little bit about yourself. So section A, we're looking at your qualifications. Section B would be your work experience. So what have you done uh, in your career so far? What are some of the areas that you've worked in? Good. So <clears throat> there's some key language here. So you can say, I was in charge of. So it's quite important that you get these prepositions correct. And then, of course, you could fill in anything after that. So I was in charge of a team of six people. I worked for, and then put in the company name, as a, or I worked in, uh, and then put in the sector for, and then the period of time, I was promoted to, and then of course you would put in your job role, I was responsible for, and then what you were responsible for, and then to talk about what you think you're good at, here's some useful vocabulary for you. Um, so I'm good at, is, is important, I'm good at, and then you could say multitasking, working under pressure, or working to a deadline. So these are also collocations or words that naturally go together. They're extremely useful. My strengths are, or my strength is, communicating well, my ability to solve problems. Of course, you could say anything about your strength, but very often interviewers are looking for specific language. So this communicating well, Ability to solve problems will certainly please the interviewer. Uh, ability to, now here's some useful um, collocations, a multitask, perform under pressure, and perform to a deadline. That's useful. I have worked for several companies, including, and then list some of the key companies. I have 
so many years experience in the field i have a proven track record this is a lovely expression i have a proven track record these are all uh collocations and vocabulary that will most certainly uh, impress the interviewer i have to liaise with you can fill in anything after that but my example was i have to liaise with other departments or i have to liaise with different teams so other useful expressions to describe yourself could be something like uh, i am hard working i'm organized i'm decisive patient easygoing a team player committed focused proactive and methodical and if you don't get a job by using those well then the job's not worth it <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm proud of quite important i'm proud of i perform well under pressure i'm self-motivated i take pride in fixed expression i take pride in my work i'm very attentive to detail i'm 100 percent involved while performing work related duties a couple of others could also be i'm good at resolving problem situations this is something an interviewer definitely wants to hear let me give it to you again i'm good at resolving problem situations what could also be useful for you is to use intensifiers uh, that could make this your statement a little bit stronger Tense intensifiers would be things like really very or extremely so for instance you could say i'm very organized and i'm extremely focused so you can see this creates a much more powerful statement about your ability further um, useful uh, collocations and language i'm good at showing initiative i'm good at presenting information or sorry presenting information solving problems controlling budgets achieving objectives motivating colleagues meeting deadlines creating ideas if when you do look at the blog and you find that some of this uh, vocabulary is too advanced or too difficult, please please go to uh, a, a decent English to English dictionary and of course look it up. Uh, it's the opportunity also for you to learn some valuable uh, new vocabulary. Um, I have one last one there that you could use. You could say, I have very good people skills, management skills, organizational skills now because you're going to be interviewing uh, for a job in English you might want to say something about your language skills in this instance you might say something like I have effective communication skills in English both verbally and in writing uh, you might want to say how long you've been speaking English in this case you would say I've been speaking English for the last uh, five weeks no. <laughs> so many years <laughs> i feel my english is competent this is a nice expression i feel my english is competent for this post or for this industry i've been working in an english speaking environment for the past so many years and i'm a confident speaker of english i feel comfortable speaking english so th these could be uh, very useful for you. Over to you, Faisal. Perfect. So the third section that we, you can highlight is any technical expertise that you have or projects that you've been involved in. Um, I can see from the messages that, you know, we have people who work in engineering, that we have people who work in business, that we have people that work in law. So this is that opportunity to highlight those qualifications. Mm -hmm. So, um, what could be is, you know, you want to you want to highlight things that you are good at. So you, I think one way to say is I'm very proud of, and then perhaps talk about a project that you did or a 
system that you were involved in setting up or whatever it is that you feel your technical expertise is. But I think it's lovely to say, I'm proud of this and then talk about your experience and then always give your reason. So say, I'm proud of this because, remember anybody can say I'm proud of it, but if you can give a reason why, it gives the interviewer more information about you and the project you were involved in. I have, and then say how many years experience you have. So I have experience working in the finance sector or whichever sector it is that you've got experience in. I have worked in this particular sector for this amount of time. I developed some important skills when I, uh, when I was and then whatever you were involved in. Perfect. And then usually the last is a bit about your background. So this is uh, where are you from, where you grew up. Absolutely. So I think that's quite quite uh, easy to navigate because you're talking about uh, facts and things about yourself as well. So I was born in and I grew up in. So, of course, you put the country, the city. I relocated. Here's some lovely vocabulary. I relocated. I emigrated. And I moved to, because remember, everyone's moving around the globe these days, and I moved to the country when I was, and then obviously give uh, the age, and I speak. This can be very useful now that we're sort of a, a global village. I speak, and then the number of languages that you speak. I currently live in, it's quite useful for the interviewer to know where you're currently located, but you could also say, this is very important, I currently live in the country you live in. However, I would be open to relocating if the company required me to do so. I think that's important that the viewer goes, oh, okay, great. Um, there's, there's prospects here. So that was just question one. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and it covered quite a few points. So um, there is something known as an elevator pitch, which is a concept of having to explain who you are in short sentences. So I'm going to give you guys the example of my elevator pitch. And every time my finger goes up, it means I've covered one of the four things we've mentioned. So I would say, my name is Faiza. I studied economics and management at Oxford University. I have worked in uh, the education sector in the UK, Canada, and the Middle East. I have specialized in sales, client management, team leadership, um, and uh, ooh, what was the other thing I've done? Event management. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, finally, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. Ethnically, I'm from Bangladesh. I studied in the UK, and I'm Canadian by nationality. I worked in Canada for five years, and I moved back to London four years ago. That is my elevator pitch, where we covered all four of and and the and all the languages in there. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I've I've used some of the language uh, that Linda identified. So hopefully you can hear it uh, in the examples. So that was question one. It's a very important question, though, because it is your opportunity to explain who you are to an yeah. interview person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the second question we're going to look at is related to your experience. So as well as giving an overview of um, kind of what experience you've had, you will often be asked, well, what experience do you have specifically in this? So some of the examples um, will depend on your job description. So if you're in customer service, for example, um, if you need certain technical skills, uh, like a particular software, um, if say you're in the legal profession, any cases, um, if you're in engineering, any projects. So a good technique to use in this instance is something called STAR. Um, and when you're answering a question, you use the STAR method. So S stands for the situation, T stands for task, A stands for action, and R stands for result. And so when you're describing something, you want to describe it in that order. 
And what I'm going to do is pass it over to Linda so she can explain to you what phrases you would use in each of those. So, Great. I uh, Thank you so much, Faiza. I just would like to acknowledge everybody who's written some great questions. And don't feel we're ignoring you. We will come back and pick up on some of those questions. But we'd like to give you the, um, the input first. And then we'll come back to your questions once we've we've gone a little bit further in. So please keep the questions coming. Don't feel like we're ignoring you. Keep those questions coming. Really important. So getting back, you're absolutely right, Pfizer. Um, the STAR approach is extremely helpful to keep you focused on your answer. And remember also that when you um, go for a job interview, it's a really good idea beforehand to uh, write all of the potential questions, uh, pot potential answer to the question so that you prepare yourself well in advance. So getting back to your good example of the STAR approach, which is situation, task, action, and result. If we looked at the kind of language that you would use to talk about the situation as an example, it could be something like this. When I worked for, I sold, set up, created, implemented, fantastic vocabulary, created, implemented, controlled, managed, designed. Now, this part of the sentence can also be used for your, when you talk about task as well. So the two could work together quite well and flow in to the other quite nicely. Another example is, a good example that comes to mind is, this is a, will give you a lovely sentence introduction to what you want to talk about. I worked in this department for this period of time and I had to, lovely vocabulary, I had to manage, oversee, control, create, liaise with, prepare, provide, organize, support, lead, review. Gosh, as I said earlier, if you don't get that job, um, it'll be a surprise. But the second part where you go, I had to, and then all the things that you had to do, this could be a nice lead into the, the second part, which is the task. Um, but still sticking with situation language, I have several years experience in, and then what it is. I have worked in, and then the sector for, and then the period of time. Uh, you could also say, as I mentioned earlier, I have a diploma in, and then what your diploma is, and I am a qualified, whatever you're qualified at. This is a lovely expression which will keep your interviewer really happy. I perform well under pressure, which was one of the main reasons why I was asked to. Now, anyone can say, I can perform well under pressure, but I think the key is you need to say why. What give an example of why? Back your back your statement up. When we talk about um, task, uh, I've got two lovely bits of language that you could use together with the ones that I mentioned in situation. As part of my role as, and then sta state your job. I also had to. What did you have to do? And I was asked to, and then whatever it was you were asked to do. And then leading on to uh, language used for action, you could say, this is what I did. I held a meeting with team members or whoever it was. I created a, whatever you created. I liaised with, whoever you liaised with, and I designed. So these are quite useful sentences to lead you into what action you took in this situation. And finally, talking about the language for result, I successfully managed, controlled, or created. We got the contract, the tender, an apology letter, or I was able to resolve the situation. That is a really, really useful sentence. I was able to resolve the situation. I was able to find solutions and I was able to move from a negative situation to a positive situation. But state what the situation is rather than use the words negative and positive. We won a new contract. Ooh, everybody wants to hear about winning. 
we achieved our sales targets or we achieved the desired result. Who doesn't want to know about things like that? Great. So um, the star technique, to be honest, can be used in any of the answers um, to the questions that we'll be covering. So the next one that we're looking at, question three, um, you may often get asked about a particularly difficult problem that you've had and what was the outcome. So one of the reasons an employer would ask you is because they want to understand how you work if there's an issue and how you would work to resolve that issue. So they want to see how you problem solve um, how you interact with other people. And this is a kind of Linda's point just now about framing positive or negative language. You have to be um, a little bit mindful of, yeah. of how you say things. So if you can make observations rather than opinions um, on the situation, I think it, it keeps it clearer. So say, you know, we weren't able to meet this sales target because there was an issue with the number of products we could get. That's better than saying our supplier failed to provide us with enough for yeah. us to be able to, to reach our sales target, for example. But um, yeah, I'll pass it over to Linda so she can give you some useful phrases as well about um, a difficult problem. Yeah, I think that what you said, Pfizer, makes total sense. And I think also, again, it leads into cultural things because in some cultures, people, you, it's okay to be very direct and negative. And you just need to be very mindful of the culture and the environment that you're interviewing, uh, you know, that you're being interviewed in and make sure that it, there's a, a good enough um, fit. But um, this question three, this is where the employer wants to know more about you. A little getting to know you a little bit more, your ability to solve problems and find solutions. So uh, a nice intro into that would be something like a good example that comes to mind is uh, in my role as I was responsible for um, due to, as an example, due to the situation, uh, for example, COVID-19, our company was under a lot of pressure to implement new safety and security measures. Our team was under pressure to meet new deadlines. Our team was under pressure to meet new deadlines. So I'm just trying to break it up a little bit so to show you the, the, the important chunks of language. I was asked to, and then what you were asked to do, I was able to turn the situation around. This is a beautiful expression because immediately you've got the interviewer's attention because they want to know, oh, my gosh, how did you turn this situation around? Are you a, a magician? <laughs> and you can follow it up by giving an example. So, for instance, you could say I was able to turn the situation around by motivating, creating, implementing or showing initiative. So if you can back it up with some evidence, definitely you're going to get that job. I was able to get the team back on track. That's really something you want to hear. Uh, and if you feel the outcome wasn't completely, as, as Pfizer was saying, we don't want to harp on the negative. You could say, I did this and this. However, it was difficult. It was a big challenge because we had limited resources. But be careful again, as Pfizer was saying, about putting in a little bit too much negative. Yeah. You want to always give a positive uh, f uh, role on things. Yeah, I think Tanya summarized it well. She said, always be positive and constructive. So absolutely, that means you can highlight absolutely. if there were any challenges or if there were any issues, um, but you do so with a, a constructive um, tone and manner because then you're addressing that, you know, it's because of this, we weren't able to achieve that. So, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. The next question um, is related to, can you give me an example of a project that you were a part of or what was your role in the project and what was the outcome? So often you'll be asked this question in an interview because they would like to know how you, are involved in a project and like where you fit in the team, 
Were you leading it? Were you a project member? Were you a subject matter expertise? Um, or were you just somebody maybe you're the decision maker? So mm. you're not involved in the project, but you sign off on the budget. Um, so, so this question is for them to understand if you were to join the team, how you would work depending on the role you're applying for. Yeah, so I was involved in several projects or you could list a particular project. I worked on a very interesting project. I have managed a large number of projects over the years. I set up, lovely phrasal verb, I set up several new systems. I was responsible for implementing the new COVID-19 safety measures. I think this is something everyone's going to be talking about. If, you, if you've yeah. got uh, lots of knowledge about COVID-19 safety measures, you're in. <laughs> this involved, what it involved, I was asked to, uh, it was, and then challenging, it was difficult, but then always use this however to turn it into a positive. So it was challenging or difficult. However, the end result was, and then insert something positive. Yeah, so you start with the slightly say, you don't say it was terrible, it was hard. It was challenging, difficult. However, the end result was, and then you add in something positive. I am very or really proud. So we know that these intensifiers can that make you feel really proud. So I was, I am very or really proud of how well it turned out. I'm very proud of the end result. We achieved the desired result. We achieved the result we wanted and we achieved our aim. I think it's really important as Pfizer was saying that you end off with something positive because it also puts you in a good light rather than you sitting there and you've ended on a sort of a sour note and the interviewer is like, oh, huh, gets awkward. So rather always keep it positive. Yep. Okay. The next question um, is, is not related to any particular project. It's not related to your technical, but this is more what you would want from a job. So a uh, possible question that you could get asked is what are the three most important things to you in your next job? What are two things you want to avoid? Now, yeah, that's the, I was just going to say the reason, that an employer would ask you these questions is because they want to know what you're looking for and checking that it matches the job or the company and that you would be a good addition to the team. So this is your chance to communicate what is important to you and what you'd want to avoid. And Linda's gonna give you some great phrases. Yeah, I think the key thing here is that um, because you're uh, talking about what you what things that would be important. I think what you need to consider is the formality and, you know, I think to enter in and say, I want this and I want this uh, is, would be, you know, culturally in British culture, it would, it would definitely come across as quite rude, a little bit demanding, a little bit too direct. So to soften it, I think it's really important just to use the word would rather than once. It's a subtle change, but it'll make a big difference in the impact that you make in your interview. So for instance, you could say, I would like to, and that could be a fixed phrase, and then you could fill it in with anything else. So I'd like to take on more responsibility. I'm looking to, and whatever it is, further my career, I'm looking to uh, work in a different field, et cetera, et cetera. I would like to further my career. So, and then say why. I think always this reason why is quite important. So I would like to further my career. So opportunities for professional development is a key word. People say, well, oh, I'd like more training, but professional development covers all things more than just training. So opportunities for professional development would be, would be important, not I want. Uh, and then why would it be important to you? Because uh, I would like to add to my skill set. This is a lovely expression. I'd like to add to my skill set. So training would be important to me. Training is very important to me because, remember, you need to use the phrases and expressions that best suit your personality, 
that are easy for you to pronounce and that are easy for you to remember. So just pick and choose which ones you feel most comfortable with. And the final one, which also is about politeness, I might or I may, when you want to talk about things that you might want to avoid, I might or I may find it difficult to, and then give your reason uh, why. I think also with this question, it will depend on the type of job you're interviewing for. It will Definitely. depend a little bit on what the interview feels like as well. Um, I've been in different environments, both being interviewed and interviewing people in, in more kind of structured, bigger organizations and smaller organizations. So sometimes you might be able to be honest about your experiences if that's the type of job you're interviewing for and other times mm. you might need to just be factual about you know these are some of the things that i would like as as um linda said or these are some of the things that i might find difficult or i wish to avoid um and you can frame it that way too okay the next uh question is fairly simple what do you like to do outside of work no um, that's easy yes yeah and that's more to find out about you as a person so personally yeah yeah so of course um nice lovely language i like i love and then going to art galleries museums whatever it is i like or i love playing football tennis i watch a lot of netflix for instance or i'll watch a lot of movies or whatever this is a wonderful thing where the interviewer can get to know a little bit about you personally I like to keep fit and active, life's expression, keep fit and active. So I, what do you do to keep fit and active? Really useful if you volunteer or you do any um, uh, thing in your personal life, not to do with sport or movies or anything, bring that in, it's useful. So you could say something like, I'm a volunteer for, or I volunteer for, and then the organization, or you could say, uh, the reason why I love or I like reading is because, I don't know, you could put something in there. I play, a lot of people play musical instruments. We had a student once who played the harp, and he actually brought his harp all the way from Japan, um, which was amazing. So yes, you could say, I play the piano, the guitar, the trumpet, and my favorite musician or composer is, I often, whatever you do often, I often cook or whatever. And every weekend or every summer or every winter, I go or I play. So it could be that you go to a, a, a you know, popular or favorite holiday destination and you might want to talk about that. And I think that sort of covers that one. Yep. And then the last popular question um, that we'll be covering in this section is what questions do you have for me? So this is when in an interview, uh, you can ask the questions um, because I think that's important in, in most interviews. It's a two-way conversation. It's an opportunity for them to learn more about you, but it's also an opportunity for you to learn more about the company that you want to uh, join. So Linda's got some great examples of yes, questions. And again, and again, I think the key is to culturally find out what would be acceptable what questions to ask because you wouldn't say to the interviewer love your tie where did you get it <laughs> you know this would be inappropriate yes would you agree Fraser? Yes. so i think the kind of, yeah. it depends on it depends on the depends on the the industry how, maybe depends on the industry like for example if in the previous questions uh maybe uh somebody said i'm really interested in going for musicals you could you know ask serious questions and then at the end be like well what's your favorite musical yes exactly but, but yes depends. i think you've got to gauge on the uh gauge on the uh on the inter the person who's interviewing you get gauge on the feeling but i think cultural thing is, is is important i think these questions that i've put together are quite safe so perhaps use these and just be safe rather than sorry so uh you could ask and i think this is quite a meaningful question um, and something that the interviewer might be quite happy to share with you is to say, where do you see the company in five years? 
also give you a good idea about the background of the company, where they, what their plans are. Does it fit in with your ideas of where you want your career to be heading? Um, what are the next steps in the interview process? Very important question. You want to know where you stand, how long you'll need to wait. Can you describe the working culture of the organization? I think this is quite key because it gives the interviewer the opportunity to show off or to not to show off, but gives the interviewer the opportunity to talk a little bit about the company and give you a feeling about the organization. Can you tell me more about the team I would be working in? What training programs are available to your employees? What do you enjoy most about working here? And when are you hoping for someone to fill this position? I think those are neat, zipped it all up, covers that topic 100%. Perfect. So um, that brings us to the end of our main section. So we're going to have Olga back because I think we have some questions. Yes, we've got a, a lot so what of good questions do you have for me, Olga. Yes. And uh, also, just before we uh, dive into questions, I just want to say, a uh, big thank you to everyone who uh, who made comments and uh, yes. ideas and questions. And it was so lovely to see some of our alumni uh, mentioning their uh, experience at our business uh, English uh, business and uh, professional English courses, uh, for example, last year and uh, and generally. So that's that's lovely to hear. And just uh, so in terms of uh, in terms of the in terms of time, we have about ten minutes because we need. Okay. So uh, what I suggest to do um, is um, actually, uh, given uh, that our alumni mentioned our business uh, courses, uh, maybe uh, Linda and uh, Pfizer, uh, could you tell us a little bit more in terms of what they can provide uh, for people in terms of uh, their English uh, language skills, uh, including um, such areas as uh, interviews, even though this is yeah. just one of the areas that may be uh, uh, that may be looked at. Yeah, I can take that one. Um, okay. So, I, actually, I think we had a, a related question um, from mm. Daniela of like, how important is it to speak fluently for a job application? And a lot of our clients come to us because they're looking to improve their fluency or they're looking to upskill themselves so that you know when they're in their job, they're more comfortable. Um, for some people, it's also to use that as a stepping up so that, you know, they will improve their English language skills, which means they can then apply, for example, um, to a job that requires them speaking in English, whereas maybe their current job doesn't. So in taking our in, a, in one of our group courses, um, you would improve all areas of your language. So it will be about presentations, it'll be about meetings, it'll be about negotiations, but there might also be an element of having to answer questions. Um, we, for example, have a different um, course called English for HR, and that's specifically for people who work in human resources. And for example, one of the topics in that course is how to interview <laughs> in English. Um, or to do recruitment and things like that. So in the group course, we cover general concepts to help you to improve your fluency, which can give you more confidence if you have to go into an interview in English, um, but also with kind of individual training, if you need to prepare specifically for an interview, uh, then we can give you the language, a lot of what sort of Linda's covered in this live stream as well. Mm. Yeah, sure. I yeah, Linda. Uh, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to say something. Um, Tanya made a very good point. Uh, she says, knowing the history of the company you intend to work with is very important during the interview. 100%. Um, yeah. For sure, you need to. I actually asked the CEO of a very top company um, uh, that I'm teaching at the moment, and I said to him, uh, what would you expect in an interview? And he said, I would expect the person to have done their research about my company and also, I would have expected them to have done research about my competitors. And I might ask them uh, some questions about that. So you're absolutely right, uh, Tanya. Uh, of course, there are, there's, this is such a huge topic, such an important topic for so many people. Um, so it's difficult to cover everything, but we've tried to cover the yep. key and most important parts that we, you know, that we thought were, you know, useful for you. Yeah. So of course, there's a lot more to this topic. 
Thank you, Linda. Uh, we also uh, have, uh, a, unfortunately, only uh, time for a couple more questions. So some of the questions uh, that we uh, had uh, earlier uh, was a question about uh, the use of titles in English, because, of course, in different countries, uh, job titles uh, might be different. I think this was a question. Um, let me let me find that. That was a question from uh, Ricardo Bertolotto uh, from Peru, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, who is a mining engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you What would your advice be? For example, I guess I guess if the uh, Ricardo, I guess the title is already in English. This is the title that you can use. I guess the problem might be, for example, if you're talking about your experience and background. Uh, and all of your uh, all of your job positions were, for example, um, in Spanish or you know, depending on uh, uh, people where you're coming from or Italy or France. So, how what would be your advice in um, almost translating those job titles in English interviews? Wow, that's a that's a difficult question. You mm -hmm. see, it's interesting. The word title, when you say title, I think more of Mr. or Mrs. Mm -hmm. or Professor or Sir or Madam or uh, Lady so-and-so. So I think when we maybe what what uh, possibly what you're talking about, Ricardo, is your job job role, your, your the position. So I think to say I'm a mining engineer or I'm an engineer specializing in mining, I would also say that this is where like the additional questions will allow you to clarify. So um, for example, if, if you say in my last job, I was a um, event consultant, doesn't necessarily explain exactly what you did for the role. So you could say as an event consultant, I would um, discuss event ideas with clients. Um, I would brainstorm to, to figure out what the theme would be for an event. Um, I would liaise with them and the suppliers to make sure that everything was on track and on delivery. So you've taken that title and expanded on it by saying, this is exactly what I did in that job. So that right. could be one of the things I think um, as That's Linda mentioned, tit yeah, title could be interpreted as as Mr. or Mrs. or how you address um, the person who's interviewing you. So I think that's going to depend on the culture you're in. Yeah. Uh, in some cultures, people would say, like, my name is Faiza also, but please call me Faiza during the interview. Or Yeah, in some cultures, they prefer it if they call you Mrs. or Miss or Mr. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. If not, keep yeah. asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Linda and Pfizer. And uh, a time for just one more question, which actually comes from Daniela Labosco. I think Daniela is from Italy, um, who is asking uh, if, and she's uh, she's also an, an engineer, construction engineer. Uh, so is this uh, still important to speak fluently uh, for technical job positions abroad? I guess here the question is not only about interview, but actually once you are uh, already working um, for uh, in the company who, uh, where English language is the language of operation, then how how is that? Is that well, really I think it's a really good question, and I think that most people. There's. Let me just clarify, Daniela, you speak English fluently. Um, most of you speak English fluently because fluently. What does fluently mean? Fluently means that you have the ability to express your needs, express your wants, express uh, your desires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, express things that you've done with some grammatical errors. Um, so you might miss out some prepositions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You might use the wrong tenses, but your meaning is still clear. So this is fluent. The problem is that it depends on how how um, professional or well, not not professional accuracy. Me, if to be more accurate means that you present uh, your language in a much more structured, clear way with absolutely no mistakes. So I think really, if we think about it nowadays, um, 
you know, level, your flu your accuracy is not usually, I wouldn't say it's not important. Of course, it is important. But if you have the ability to, to clearly communicate and answer the question, so first of all, it's about that listening. Do you understand the question? And that you're able to answer the question, whether you use accurate language or not, sometimes is not important. But I do think it depends on the role. Yep. Because very often they'll say, we need uh, an expert speaker or whatever it actually is. Yeah. And uh, uh, as Linda said, it's going to depend. And some companies will designate that. So you said you work in engineering. So you're probably going to have to know the vocabulary of different uh, measurements and things in yes. English to be able to do the job if you're applying for an English language one. Um, but it, I think that's actually an excellent question to ask. Um, when you get to the end of the interview, you can be mm -hmm. like, what level do I need? Um, mm. You know, if we've had, for example, people who work in hospitality or who work in health and safety in the oil and gas sector, and if the language in the kitchen or the language on the, the floor of the oil rig is English, everybody needs to be perfect because that's safety. Um, Absolutely. And there's there's kind of the risk and the danger element there. So um, it's an excellent question to ask. Uh, and hopefully the company will be able to answer that for you. All I can say is join one of our courses and get more accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's definitely a great advice, uh, given that we've got experience delivering English language courses to people from absolutely different industries, from oil and gas, to banking, to retail and hospitality and uh, catering, kitchen, everything. everything. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is something that we can also help you with. So on this note, uh, I would like to say really a uh, huge thank you to Linda and Pfizer for sharing uh, your knowledge uh, with uh, our viewers and uh, your experience um, from for which, which, which actually comes from uh, training clients for many, many years, for uh, conducting interviews in different countries for many, many years. And of course, a really huge thank you to uh, all of our viewers uh, and for all of your questions. And of course, we probably haven't answered all of them, uh, but uh, do write to us. Uh, you can contact us uh, either via londonschool.com or uh, you can uh, write to us uh, on our um, email uh, address clients at London School. Um, so through 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 the website or through the email and we will be able to help you. Uh, and if you have questions about English language training, business and professional or for specific industries, we'll also be able uh, to help you with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and just to also mention that we've got another live stream coming up on Thursday. So uh, we, we uh, talked uh, quite a bit here in this live stream about accuracy and uh, grammar and mistakes that you can make. So uh, specifically for this, uh, we have uh, a live stream uh, on eight common uh, mistakes in English grammar and what you should do uh, to avoid uh, making them. So well, there you go. <laughs> this, this is at 5.30 uh, this Wednesday. Uh, so. Uh, Linda Pfizer, would you like to say a few uh, words? Uh, yes. Just, just what, what, what would, would I you like? I just want to say yeah. thank you so much for all the fantastic comments, for taking the time to uh, support and listen to us. A special mention to Inigo from Spain, a long-standing old student of mine from, well, he's not old in age, but ex-student uh, from 2011 when I taught in Cape Town. And just so thank you to everybody. Uh, really lovely comments. Lovely to see you all. Hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Good luck if you are applying for an interview. This is some very useful language. Please go to the blog um, and have a look at the blog and you'll find some of this, or if not all of it, on the blog um, so that you can take your time and slowly process it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we've very much enjoyed it today. We're glad you found it to be helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, you know where to, to email us. And then yes. we hope to see you at a, another live stream soon. So thank you, yes. everybody, for joining us. Great. And uh, as, uh, as usual, and uh, uh, the, what, what we say uh, is uh, keep safe, keep well, uh, particularly in this current environment. Yes. And keep learning English. Absolutely. 
Yoo-hoo. Take care. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>